Well, these are estimates, and uh, there's no question that our proposal, when it goes to council in July, it will be a request of the city and the TTC to confirm these numbers, confirm these lines, and confirm this funding strategy as, as a sustainable, viable strategy to fund transit. Uh, and again, we know that we will have the, 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 those numbers will, uh, will escalate, we know that, but I think it is important that we, we nail down what the base numbers are, and so that we can actually begin to fund a plan. Do I think Karen should run for mayor? Sorry. <laughs> this is about a transit plan, and uh, we have a mayor. And I'd like to say that, um, you know, I think that the reason, if, if we're actually able to sell this value proposition to the people of Toronto, and if we are able to convince them that it is worth their while to pay an extra $45 a year, leading up to $180 a year to invest in transit, if we're able to do that, it will only be because of the work the mayor has done over the last two years to bring our city budget in line. And that if we can restore public confidence that the city of Toronto actually is spending tax dollars wisely, I think we'll move a long way in our ability to convince taxpayers that this money will also be spent wisely. And, and I think I, I, I'd like to say that I, I think uh, I, I want to keep politics out of this. What I want to do as a Scarborough Councillor is make sure that Scarborough gets a subway. We don't have with the subway that we want right now. And I would invite our Mayor, Councillor Stintz, and every member of Council uh, to ride with me at the front of the car when we open that subway line in Scarborough. And I believe my neighbours, when I talk to them and I say to them, are you willing to pay to build a subway? I think most of my neighbours in Scarborough are going to say yes. I'm willing to pay more in my taxes if you promise me and, may, and protect it in legislation that when I give you money, you're actually going to build a subway, you're not going to give it to the police or the fire or the emergency services or the daycare centers or the swimming pools. You're going to take my money, you're going to put it in a dedicated fund, and you're going to build transit. That, I think, has been the piece that's been missing from all people's uh, uh, positions, and I think that's what we have before us today, the dream in Scarborough to be able to have a Scarborough subway that is actually paid for and doesn't burden future generations with debt. I think when, when you look at the, the profile of who lives in Scarborough, people are going to say, you know what, I don't like paying you more taxes, but I do feel better that it's going to be dedicated to, for transit, and I do feel better that my great-grandkids aren't going to be paying off debt in 30 or 50 years from now. We can do this on a pay-as-you-go basis, and I think that has a lot of merit. Thank you. Uh, so let me go, and then I'll come back to you, Jane, okay? Yeah. Have you made any effort to get the mayor's office involved in this? Uh, oh, yes, no, we've had conversations with the mayor's office about uh, the priority projects and about the funding. And uh, so they are aware, they're aware of the press conference we were having today. And um, you know, again, trying to support the mayor's vision for a subway to Scarborough. How do you feel about your support? <laughs> Did you have any sense of that? Well, you know, we have a council meeting coming up July 9th and 10th. And so, you know, that will really be the day that the votes are counted. Yes, James? Councillor Thompson this morning said, you know, your involvement in the mayor's office in this process was working for how um, Are you guys simply stepping in to fill a policy void on the transit file that Mayor Ford has advocated, and are, are you guys kind of doing an end run around that? Well, I mean, ultimately, what, in my experience in council over the last nine years, we have not had a council endorsed transit plan. We've had Transit City, we've had the big move, but we've not actually brought a fully comprehensive network transit plan to council. This is our attempt to bring that plan to council. It's also a recognition that we need to fund the plan. And so ultimately it is council's plan and it, it will be determined by council. Is there another think, transit plan coming forward without like, the, the endorsement of the mayor? Like, is that problematic? No, I think the mayor has been very consistent in that he supports subways. This plan includes subways. It includes a subway in Scarborough. Glenn, did you want to? Yeah, I, I think when, when you look at the debates that we've been having over the last year and a half, transit has been top of mind for everybody. The, the lines that we have in here have been endorsed by council, by the mayor, by many, many other people. So this isn't something that we just thought of as chair and vice chair of the TTC. Our jobs as chair and vice chair of the TTC is to create a, a viable, workable, sustainable transit plan. And we felt during that last debate that there wasn't one. We were debating over four lines. We determined the future of those four lines. We said, what's the next step? Nobody has a next step. Our obligation as chair and vice chair of the TTC was to create that plan, 
And if you go over the minutes and look at the recorded votes as we have, you'll see that council has supported virtually every single line that's in this plan. So we think what we're doing for council is, is putting it together in a package, letting people see what's there, giving it a funding mechanism, and making out of that large pool two priority projects, one being a, a subway in Scarborough, the other one being an LRT down in downtown Toronto, because those are the very urgent uh, lines that need to be built, and in a year from now, we won't be able to build those lines. So that's why we're asking for action now. You're, you're asking for some changes to uh, projects that are Metrolink projects. Have you had discussions with them, and, and what makes you think that they're open to, uh, to changing their plans? Oh, yes, we've had discussions with the Minister's Office and with Metrolinks and with other members of, of the provincial government. And, uh, you know, again, it's the will of council that will determine whether or not these projects will be considered by the, by the province. What, what are you hearing from the province, though? What are they saying about this plan? You know, again, we've had many discussions with them. This is a proposal we're bringing to council. I think once council has an opportunity to review it, those discussions will continue. Councilor, and I'd like to uh, can I, can I just respond as well? I, I'd like to think that, that the reality today, there is no municipality giving substantial financial contributions to build transit anywhere in the province of Ontario. The City of Toronto would be the very first municipality to step up to the plate to say, we're willing to do something very unpopular. <laughs> we're willing to increase people's taxes into a dedicated fund to help Metrolinx and the provincial government in terms of hundreds of millions of dollars over the decades to build public transit. So we think folks like Metrolinx are going to be very happy. If you look at the Scarborough subway, for example, by the City of Toronto contributing $500 million, we can replace the RT line with a subway, and I don't think Metrolinx has ever had somebody walk in the door if council approves this saying, we're willing to tax our own residents so that we can provide $500 million to build a subway. If I was on Metrolinx, I'd be doing somersaults. Right. And so I think your question, Don, is how confident are we? How confident are you in the province to make that change so you can go forward with this funding plan? Well, you know, again, part of it is having, the first step is getting council to approve this plan. Yeah. And so I'm if, assuming you have the votes if we can get past that hurdle, then it is ultimately a, dis a decision for the province to make. And we think it makes for better transit. We think it delivers the right subway to Scarborough. The province could decide that that's not actually how they want to spend the resources. And you know what? That's fine because we have a, a big network now and uh, many ways that we can invest in them. And I believe when you look at our last round of council discussions, that I was very proud to see a letter there from Scarborough caucus members unanimously saying we support subways in Scarborough. Now, our council disagreed with them. There was the wrong subway in the wrong place with no funding. We have the right subway in the right place with the, with the ridership and the funding in place. So I believe if, if the province listens to its own Scarborough caucus members, you'll have unanimous support in Scarborough to say, if the City of Toronto wants to make a financial contribution to build a subway in Scarborough, we're going to be there. So Scarborough caucus members are already on board supporting the subway initiatives. We fully expect that they'll be back in October supporting uh, subway initiatives and making sure that uh, we have a subway system north of 401 to Shepherd and Malvern out in Scarborough. So let me come over here and I'll come back to you. This is a function of an agrarian provincial political construction that doesn't work for modern cities. We've been starved for a long time from the province, mm -hmm. it, and it's come to sort of a, uh, a desperate straits. Is that not the case? Well, I, I think we would all agree that Toronto has a great history of planning transit and not such a great history of building transit. And today's the day we like to turn the page on that history. The funding for the city has been, has been without. Yes, it's true. We have, uh, there's been different provincial priorities that have, that have emerged over time that have taken funding away from transit. Today we're saying now it's important to the city of Toronto that we reinvest in transit and we're willing to step up and put our fair share in. And I think this question, can you change the culture of the province? Well, That's a we, question for the province. Yeah, and, and we, we're very encouraged by the provincial government's uh, very generous $8.4 billion contributions. That alone will help transform the city. Councillor Stintz and I, as chair and vice chair of TTC, said after this incredible $8.5 billion gift, what's next? Do we stop? And the answer for us is we can't stop. We have to go on, and this is the plan we're putting forward. So the provincial government is, is handing out billions of dollars, not just to Toronto, but to other municipalities. So we think the political will there is there at the provincial level as well, but that remains to be seen. We can't speak for it. And just to quickly your point on, if we had the mayor's support on the Scarborough subway, I think that would go a long way into this province. 
Yeah. A, a few months ago, you asked council to endorse a plan for an LRT on the, what is now the Scarborough RT. Yeah. And now you're saying that the best plan is a, is a subway. You have to vote for that. How do you explain yeah. Well, again, it's a timing issue. And it, uh, at the time that we were making those decisions, we didn't have a dedicated funding model. Because conditional, condi condi it's a condition that we come up with the difference. And so now we're in a position where we actually can identify a way that we can make up the difference between an LRT and a subway in Scarborough. And we think we have a good plan, and we think it makes for good transit. Say so the province says no to the policy change and no to any more changes to this agreement that's now been changed numerous times. What do you guys do then? Well, I think that if the will of council is there to request a change to the CDA model, I think the province would be hard pressed not to listen to the will of council. Um, if they choose not to dedicate the $1.8 to a subway, as I say, there's other projects that we can build that are going to improve transit in the city. Uh, yes, John? And then I'll come back to Tess, sorry. Um, so, uh, Metrolinx is coming out with the investment strategy. Um, they're going to start talking about this in the fall. Does this make it more difficult or easier for Metrolinx to come up with a plan that raise like $2 billion a year through the GTA? Like, or are you going to end up double taxing the people in the city? Well, I think there's a general understanding that we need to invest in transit, and certainly I'm not going to pretend that we're doing Metrolinx's work. I think what we're recognizing as a city is that we need to have our own dedicated stream, revenue stream, and contribute our one-third to the projects that Metrolinx, and, and as I say, these projects are not different from Metrolinx projects. And what we're doing as a city is saying we're prepared to contribute our one-third. And, and I think we have to be aware that as, as Torontonians and with deadlines looming for the ability to build a Scarborough subway from Kennedy Station up to Shepherd, is that people have been talking about maybe funding some transit projects at some time on, in some configuration for decades. I've been on council for eight years. I've been council since and I both got elected at the same time. For eight years, we've heard a lot of talk. We've heard a lot of talk. It's time for action right now. And we're taking the unpopular step of saying to our next door neighbors, we believe we're going to have to face an tax over four years that will climb up to $180 and we're going to use that to pay for transit. And if somebody else wants to join the party, we welcome them 100%. Sorry, John, I missed you. I'll come back to you. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, in terms of funding, a lot of PTC riders who maybe don't own property, a little bit of what they can be taxed and then get the money from riders who don't own property. Right, so that's a good question. Because if we, part of this proposal, what we need to study is the impact it has on all residential classes and all commercial classes. So it's not just homes that will be taxed, it will be... It, it will be all classes in the city. And that's part of what the proposal will review in the fall. Are you asking um, council to approve a study in July? What are you yes, asking? absolutely. What we're bringing to council in July is we believe that this is a, a vision for transit that needs to be studied. It needs to be embedded in the official plan. It needs a dedicated funding model. We know that the model needs to be further studied and that we expect that study to come back in October. So this is really a directional report. Yes? You dedicated fund. It's just that's correct. So what about operating, which is an ongoing issue in that other part of the city budget? Yes, it will, it will remain an ongoing issue. This, is, uh, this dedicated fund will, is intention is to strictly be, strictly be dedicated to capital. And, and I think we've made that decision because we, we again, uh, as chair and vice chair of TTC, would feel uncomfortable going to people, similar to the vehicle registration tax, and we're going to tax you, and you're not really going to know where that money is going. I think people have said to us, if we're going to give you money, we want to see some results. So we don't want to, to impose a new tax and then say, well, you're not actually going to see changes anywhere. What you're going to do is have more efficient operations. People will simply not believe us. They're very skeptical. They're very jaded. They've heard it all before. What they want to see is, if you're going to tax me, you've got to put that in a legislative fund that is protected, that is dedicated, and I'm going to see the results. And when, when I ask you, what are you doing with your with my money, you can point to a map and say, that line this year is being built. And I'm very proud to be able to say this to Scarborough residents, the very first line being built is the one in Scarborough, and it's a subway from Kennedy Station up to Shepherd. That's what people need to see in order to say yes to any more tax. Okay, so we're going to take three more questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The mayor's office and the supporters are obviously pretty apathetic about this. <laughs> um, what are you going to do over the next number of months for October? Like, how to ensure it's going to be a pretty efficient pushback on the mayor? I think partly, 
Yeah, no, I mean, again, it's, this is what, what we're, we're actually trying to learn from our mistakes. <laughs> so we didn't want to just drop this at council. We wanted to give some time for people to digest it. And uh, we did involve the mayor's office. They knew it was coming. Their request was, please just don't make a decision in July. Please let it happen in October. Absolutely, we understand that. Part of, part of our work over the next few weeks is working with our colleagues, making sure they understand what this proposal is. Um, if they have questions or concerns about how discussions are taking place, then we can certainly address those. You know, our hope is that we actually get a unanimous vote at council to advance this proposal forward. And when we look at, at, at what we're doing, uh, Councillor Del Grand, to his credit, recommended a rapid transit legacy fund. We're recommending the same thing as the budget sheet. The mayor did specifically chose not to support that. Yes, but, but in terms of our colleagues, in terms of the City of Toronto's budget chief, uh, Councillor Del Grand, we're Sorry. recommending what Councillor Del Grand recommended. Uh, Councillor Del Grand put a motion forward on the floor of Council at 10 o'clock in the morning for a uh, parking tax. We're actually putting a, a motion forward today to go to July and then go to October. So we hope in the fullness of time our colleagues will say, you know what, this is a very good plan and we have to pay for it. And they will join us in the vote of unanimous. Okay, so we've got a question from John and then we'll take one last question. One more thing on the operating. So, I mean, you have a $500 million shortfall on approximately on, on TTC operating. So, when you try to sell this to people in Toronto, I mean, why not say we're going to dedicate some of that revenue to dealing with the future shortfall, which we know is going to happen when we build out these lines? Um, why is that sort of going to be We felt it was important that we have a dedicated transit fund for capital expansion. And we know we have an operating issue that is ongoing that will only increase as our network increases. We, we, we understand that. And it, it, there may come a point where we need to go back to the public and ask for their support on the operating side. But first and foremost, we need to demonstrate to the public that we are committed to expanding the system so they have confidence that their money is being spent wisely. Okay, last question. Uh, yes, no, Alan, can, can we go online? No. Yes. Um, earlier this year, you gave a talk at the Board of Trade. And yes. at that talk afterwards, you said that you thought the TTC should get out of transit planning. What's changed um, since then? Well, this is, again, consistent with the big move. So it is consistent with the regional plan. This is not the TTC's plan. And I think we need to make that clear. If this gets approved, this is Council's plan. And this will be the vision that Council has set for how transit is going to get built in the city. Right. But back then, you said it should be a, a regional Metrolinks led process. What has something changed in your understanding of how Metrolinx is working or is not working? No, this is completely consistent with the Metrolinx plan. Great. Thank you all. Thank you very much.